I got a suggestion from a viewer that a new uh, people just getting into astronomy or telescopes uh, or just thinking about it, not even quite uh, there yet, might need a little more perspective in sort of anticipating where uh, where to go, what how lenses work with uh, objectives, that is how eyepieces work with the objectives in the telescope uh, to produce various uh, results for different kinds of things like solar system objects, the moon, uh, the planets, and deep sky objects like nebula and galaxies and so on. So I thought I would uh, put together a few thoughts of things that I wish I had known when I first started out in astronomy. Now I had uh, support. My parents bought me a telescope, but they were, uh, we were very poor and it was a, any spare money was hard to come by. But nonetheless, they found a few dollars to buy me a telescope for Christmas when I was uh, nine years old. It really got me started. Came with a little book, and I've talked about that in another video. But quite honestly, I might have been better off had they bought me a pair of binoculars to start with. And as I go through this, you'll see why. My advice is anyone starting out really should start with binoculars, or actually, better yet, start with just going out and looking at the night sky. Now, 20 or 30 years ago, that was, you didn't really need binoculars quite as much as you might today, because there wasn't as much light pollution. So you could see a lot of things with your uh, unaided eye. But in terms of binoculars, and I'll just do, this is not intended to be a review, but I will talk a little bit about a few pairs of binoculars that I own. The first is a pair of Bushnell. Let me see if I can get some more light on that. And you may see that here it says 7 15 by 35. What that means is there's a there's a zoom control here that goes from 7 power to 15 power. And the 35 refers to the diameter in millimeters of the objective lenses, in this case these. These are not bad binoculars. They're very portable. Uh, I bought them to to help me see. We used to have nosebleed tickets to our uh, local football team, my alma mater, and they were way up in uh, what was called the upper deck. So I bought these so I could see what was going on on the field a little better. They're fine for that purpose, that is for sporting events, maybe for hunting. If you already have a pair of binoculars like this, please go ahead and try them on astronomy. But I think you'll find with time that they really aren't exactly what you're looking for. Another pair that I have are these of uh, Jason. They're called Mercury. And these are also, as you can see here, 7 by 35. Now, these are actually a little better one problem with zoom binoculars is the optics are sometimes compromised, but uh, these are actually not bad. They're made by Jason and they're relatively inexpensive. But I suggest that rather than get something of those sizes, you try to get something more like this. This is a 7 by 50. Let me see if I can get it uh, where you can read it better. 7 by 50, you see right here the where it says Optex, 7 by 50. Now, these are the kind of binoculars that the U.S. Navy bought, not this particular brand, uh, but the, the basic 7 by 50. And the reason is they found that at night, 
Having the 50 millimeter objective lens really made a difference in being able to spot submarines and uh, other naval vessels and so on. They really work well, uh, at least a lot better at night. So I would suggest the 7x50s. You may notice on the paper here I have marked $35. I found a pair of Celestron 7x50s on Amazon this morning that cost $35. So that's so, somewhere you could start. But I've never owned those binoculars. But I do own a pair of Celestron 15 by 70 Skymasters. There's the uh, Skymasters that are made by Celestron. And I can recommend these. They're quite good. The problem with these is the, the 15 power is a little bit uh, too high to be held in the hand. So they include a, uh, an adapter that allows you to put these on a tripod. I suggest, frankly, that you upgrade to a little better. Here is a binocular tripod adapter that Celestron sells for not very much more money and it's made of metal. This one is unfortunately made of plastic, uh, the one that comes with the, with the binoculars. And the problem with that is it tends to sometimes twist a little bit too much. So I bought this because when I mount that on a uh, uh, tripod, I prefer a little more stiffness in the adapter. There also is a a uh, cheaper one called a C, let me see if you can read that, called a CXZJJ. There's the markings that I also bought from Amazon. It's also made of metal. It's a little smaller, but quite a bit cheaper than the Celestron. So those are some possibilities. And I do suggest that early on you might want to get a Star Atlas. I think the Cambridge Star Atlas is the best overall uh, Star Atlas to own, but remember, and uh, I'll do this maybe in a subsequent video, it depends a lot on what you want to look for because the, the Cambridge is really good for deep sky. By the way, you don't really need a Star Atlas if you're going to be looking at the moon and the planets. I think a tripod and mount is a very good idea, but I think one of the best ideas is do at least 25 nights of looking at the stars and identifying and kind of learning your way around with either the naked eye or with a pair of binoculars before you ever even consider getting a telescope. Now, let me uh, also go into a few ideas that occurred to me as I was preparing to make this video. Perhaps the most important idea that I can pass on is the importance of keeping the dust away from your, uh, your optics. The, whether it's binoculars or a telescope, whether it's the eyepiece or the objective, you really want to keep the dust away. And the most gentle way to get the dust off is using air. This is a little squeeze bottle. It's almost like a little squeeze toy. You may not be able to hear that, but basically it's squeezing air out of that little uh, vent there. And a lot of dust you can just blow off as long as it hasn't stuck on there very much. Now, if you go out in the night and you get dew on the lenses of your binoculars or your telescope, it will tend to stick. And air probably won't knock it off of there. I suggest that you first wait, bring the binoculars or telescope back into a dry environment and allow it to stabilize and the, and the moisture to evaporate before you try to get the dust off. Try blowing the air. Use a soft brush like this that you can get at 
virtually anywhere. I think you can even buy them at places like Target. I think this came from a from an optometry shop, but nonetheless, they are available. You can also use cleaning cloths, but make sure it really is an optics cleaning cloth, not an old rag you have laying around, uh, or even a handkerchief, and certainly not any kind of tissue, like uh, Kleenex brand or any other kind of tissue. Don't use tissue. Finally, uh, don't use solvents and do and never rub coated lenses. A coated lens is a lens like you see here. You notice that there's a color and that means that the lens has been coated and you definitely don't want to rub through that coating. It goes it has a plays a major role in keeping down reflections and aberrations of various sorts. Okay, since the uh, viewer also asked a little bit about eyepieces. I thought I might mention those and then kind of close this out for now with just a few more thoughts with regard to eyepieces. Now, I said earlier, don't go to a telescope until you have some uh, time observing the sky. That will do a couple of things. One is, you'll find out if you're really interested in this. Second, you'll find out the kinds of things you might be interested in seeing, whether you're more interested in seeing the planets or observing the moon on a regular basis or deep sky objects or maybe a mix of those. And that will go a long way toward helping you decide what kind of telescope and what kind of eyepieces you want to buy. When it comes to eyepieces, a few of the best you can afford is better than all the rest put together. And so I recommend that if you buy a telescope that you start with just the eyepiece that came with it. Don't buy any more until you have at least 25 observing sessions with your new telescope and the eyepiece it came with. Then if you find that you want to go with deep sky objects, you probably want to get one with a longer focal length. Most telescopes today come with around a 20 to 25 uh, millimeter lens. But if you want to look at deep sky, you want a 30 millimeter or longer focal length lenses. Now, I suggest that you go to the Orion Telescope's YouTube channel and watch the video there on how to choose an eyepiece. It's, it goes into a lot of depth about how you compute the effective field of view and all of these things. The important thing to remember is with deep sky objects it's not the power that matters. In fact you do not want high power at all. What you want is a wide field of view. So, in this second thing, with regard to wide-angle field of view, it's most important in the deep sky, and if you can get an effective, uh, I'm sorry, an, a, an eye field of view, that is the field of view that you perceive through the eyepiece of 60 or more degrees, you're doing okay for the deep sky. When you start approaching anything above about 60 or 65 degrees, they get pretty expensive pretty fast. In a in the video on eyepieces, I talked about a set of SV Boney 62 degree aspheric eyepieces. Those would, would be quite good. One problem though is that particular set is really more useful for planets because if I remember right, the all of them are below 20 uh, millimeters in focal length. Now short focal lengths are much better for planets and here power does matter. You do want as much power as you can get given two things. Scene conditions and brightness. The more powerful you, uh, the more power you use, the dimmer the planet will look. And if the scene conditions are not particularly good, the more power you get, the worse the image is. So there is always, at any given time, a, 
a maximum effective power. And quite frankly, it is generally about where the uh, eyepiece that came with your telescope is, or maybe one just slightly shorter focal length than that. So those are my ideas on, uh, on eyepieces in terms of planning ahead. Okay, what would I suggest if you absolutely, positively want to get a telescope? Well, of course, as I've said already, start with just looking at the night sky. Start with, uh, if, if you absolutely have to have something, buy a pair of binoculars if you don't already have a pair. But if you insist on getting a telescope, I suggest that you start with uh, a 5-inch or larger telescope with a go-to mount if you're just starting out. Why 5-inch to 5 to 8 inches? Because frankly, anything below that, you're going to want to start upgrading almost immediately. Whereas if you get something in 5 to 8 inches with a go-to mount, the I found a 5-inch a on Amazon with a go-to mount, uh, reasonably uh, good-looking telescope for about $400. A good 8-inch, uh, by the way, the, the numbers in parentheses are the objective in millimeters, so 130 millimeters to 200 or so millimeters. Actually, uh, 8 inches is a little bit more than 200, but rounded off. With a go-to mount, and the 8-inch with a go-to mount can run you about $1,200. Now, sometimes you can get them on sale, particularly during the holidays. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, you can often get them for less than $1,000. That is an 8-inch with a go-to mount. Start off with one or two eyepieces, whatever the telescope comes with. Normally, it comes with a 25. If you're going to add one, uh, I think if you want to go with planets, we'll add a 10 millimeter. That's enough different from the 25. Furthermore, if you also, and, and by the way, make sure you get a tripod, obviously. Uh, observe things with for 25 or more nights before you decide whether to upgrade or not. I suggest you always get a power supply. Frankly, having to change batteries, and especially if you're out somewhere and you forgot to bring batteries and your uh, unit stops working correctly. By the way, some units, the, it starts giving you errors, like uh, on one of my Mead telescopes, when, it, when the battery starts to run down, it starts saying it's a, there's some sort of uh, tracking error, as though there's something wrong with the motor mechanism, but it's just low voltage. Before you go to optional eyepieces, think about whether you want to do solar system or deep sky, as I've talked about before. If solar system, you may want to go as low as a 4 millimeter. Now this is in addition to a 25 and a 10. And you may want to get a Barlow lens because that multiplies the power of those by 2. There's an, a Barlow lens I found on Amazon for $17. There's an SV Boney 4mm for th 13 Or if you get that set I talked about, the 4mm is in there. If you're going to go with deep sky, the 32mm SV Boney runs about $30. And finally, a focal reducer, which is a little bit expensive. But a focal reducer for a Smith Cassegrain is an excellent idea if you're going to be doing deep sky. I won't get into why. If you want to see more about that, uh, go to the YouTube channel of Slyman, S-L-Y-M-I-N. He has a really good video on focal reducers. In terms of optional filters, I would say stick with a neutral density filter to start with. Yes, you can get a sky glow filter or, a, or spend a lot and get a really fancy narrowband filter, but I would wait and see. The only reason I say the neutral density is if you're going to look at the moon, it really is a good idea to have a neutral density filter. Finally, some optional features you might want to consider at some point is a motorized focuser, a 2-inch diagonal and lenses, and the focal reducer that I mentioned up here. I would put off all of these for a while until I had used my telescope at least 25 times and I'm beginning to discover, do I want to see 
the solar system? Do I want to see deep sky objects? How much time do I actually spend doing either of those? And finally, what is the uh, where, where am I? Where do I think I'm going to be going? So here are my closing thoughts. First, try before you buy. By that I mean, join an astronomy club if you can find one, attend star parties, watch YouTube videos, and most important of all, use a telescope, preferably somebody else's telescope, like at a star party before you buy your own. That'll also let you meet people who know a lot more about it than you do and who can help you along the way when you have questions. The next thing is learn the sky. The If each of your viewing sessions you do a little planning, either with some software like Stellarium, I've talked about that in a, in a video which I'm not sure if I've posted yet, or uh, a star atlas if you're looking at deep sky objects. The next thing is don't buy a bunch of books. I know I talk about some books that are really useful and have been helpful, but use the library. I'm frugal. I'm Scottish, and uh, though I now have a little bit of money to spend on things like this, I grew up rather poor, and so I'm used to using the maximum free resources. Use the library, use the internet. Lots of good stuff on YouTube, and finally, the Orion Telescope's YouTube channel has some great videos for people who are just getting started. And then I'll close with this issue. You never know what you're going to get when you go out to look in the night sky. No matter how many times you watch the weather report, when you go out, you find you're always surprised. So, if you get lemons, make lemonade. Whatever is available, if you can see the moon and you can't see anything else, then observe the moon. You'll learn something. Same way with planets. If there are no good planets available, look for deep sky. Even if you only want to look at deep sky, if the planets are well placed, like a good opposition, I won't talk about that, but that basically means the planet looks, looks the best it's going to look for a while, go ahead and look at planets. But the most important thing is have fun, meet people that are involved in this same hobby, and treat it as a hobby, not as a toy collection. I think if you observe those rules as much as you can, you'll find that astronomy is a very rewarding hobby, and it's not only something that will teach you a lot about uh, the sky, but even if you get into it a little bit, a little bit about astrophysics, but more important, you'll make contact with a lot of great people who love to look at the sky. So, till the next video, have a nice day.